bless the Lord. We bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord. We will remember all God's blessings. The Lord forgives all our sins and heals all our infirmities. The Lord redeems our life from the grave and crowns us with mercy and loving kindness. And so we gather in humble gratitude to offer God our prayer and praise. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Joel 2, verses 1 to 2 and 12 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread among the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. I would invite you to join me as together we say the song from Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from every country and bring you home to your own land. I will pour clean water upon you, purify you from all defilement, and cleanse you from all your idols. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. I will take from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, make you walk in my ways, and observe my decrees. You shall dwell in the land I gave to your forebears. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. A reading from Matthew 6, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not know, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret 
will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, calm our hearts and minds and create a quiet space deep within us where our spirits can attend to your word. Through the work of your spirit, may we see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Amen. Well, it is Ash Wednesday, and if we were not in lockdown, if we were together worshiping in the church, at the appropriate moment, you would solemnly walk forward to the altar rail, and I would make the sign of the cross on your forehead with ashes, and I would repeat to you the ancient words of the church, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember your mortality. Remember the inevitability of your death. And somewhere deep in your heart, you would say to yourself, well, thanks for the good news, Bishop. And then you would get up and walk solemnly back to the pew, thinking that perhaps you needed to go home and have a scotch, except it's Lent, and you've probably given that up for the season. Listen, I, I am a vulnerable, at-risk senior living with COVID-19 all around us. I have been made aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life every hour of every day for the last 365 days. I don't know about you, but in the midst of pandemic, when we are all hanging on by our fingernails, living with profound stress and anxiety, I do not want to focus on the inevitability of death, yours or mine. But that's okay, because I believe, I really believe that Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent is about far, far more than that. See, I believe that, that Ash Wednesday is the beginning for us. If we choose to take it, it is the beginning for us of a journey that takes us from ashes to Easter. And if we embrace the journey, if we enter into the journey, it is one which will take us from brokenness to shalom, which is wellness and wholeness. You might remember that two weeks ago, the gospel reading told the story of Jesus entering into a synagogue at the very beginning of his public ministry, where he preached 
and then healed a man who was possessed by an unclean spirit. And we talked about how that moment in time was a symbol or a sign that Jesus, the Son of God, had come into a broken ecclesia, a broken community, a broken church that was made up of broken people in a broken world. What was true then is true today. So, what might this journey in Lent look like? It begins, I believe, with honesty. And so today, I want to invite you, as we make our way through Lent, to look around and to look in the mirror. Look for what it is that is broken and needs to be fixed. Look for the hurts that need to be healed in your life, in your relationships, and in the world. See, I, I think that throughout history, I think that Lent has been about the courage to be honest, the courage not to simply pretend. But Lent is about more. It is also about repentance. And, and remember, please, that repentance is not simply about saying, I'm sorry because I'm such a wretched, miserable sinner, to paraphrase the words of our prayer books. The fact is, most of us aren't all that wretched and miserable. But, but, repenting means to turn away, to turn away from the attitudes and behaviors, to turn away from the prejudices and preconceived ideas, to turn away from the illusions, to turn away from all of those things which can cause pain and suffering and destruction in our lives and in the lives of those around. But repentance is not simply turning away from something. It is also about turning towards God, knowing that ultimately it is God who is the source of healing and restoration. It is God who is the source of justice and freedom and peace for all people. And listen, it can be as simple as this. Let, let me recommend to you, let me suggest to you, let me invite you during this sacred season to take the time to sit quietly and to think about those people who have hurt you, who have wounded you in your life. Those people who have said or done things to you that have hurt you so profoundly that you still carry the scars and then turn towards God and ask for the strength and for the courage to forgive them. And before you think I've just let you off the hook, I want you also in a quiet space and time to think about those people that you may have wounded by words that you have spoken, by actions that you have taken just by being who you are. Think about people for whom you have inadvertently inflicted pain and turn to God and ask for the courage and the strength and the will to do what is necessary to heal that broken relationship. Ask for the courage and the strength to ask for an apology 
and to fix what has been broken. And we need to understand that this business about being honest, this business about repentance, turning away from and, and, and turning to uh, this journey from brokenness to wholeness, from brokenness to shalom, it, it's, not, it's not like a shingle shot. It's not something that you do once and, and you're good for the rest of your life. It has to be part of, of who we are today, tomorrow, and forever. It has to be part of the ongoing dance of life. And so, my friends, on this Ash Wednesday, on this sacred day at the beginning of a sacred season, let the dance begin. Let the journey begin. Together, let us make our way from ashes to Easter, from brokenness to wellness, to wholeness, to shalom, for ourselves, for our families, for our community, for the world. Let all God's children say amen. Dear friends in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the word of God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we confess that the world is not as you created it to be. Hear our prayers for the world and for one another. Our love is imperfect and often fails. Help us to love you with heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We have been deaf to your call to serve. Strengthen us to be of service to those in need. Let all people hear your call to join in the building of your kingdom of grace among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our lives, anger, pride, hypocrisy, and impatience hinder the life-giving relationships we long for. Restore our broken souls and mend this suffering world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All around us, self-indulgence, envy, and greed lead to the exploitation of others. Open our eyes to the impact of our desires on the earth and all its peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All around us, fear, prejudice, and contempt for others degrade human life. Stir our hearts with your spirit so that we can see that all humanity is created in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All around us, waste and pollution destroy your creation. Awaken us to the serious consequences of our actions. Move in us by your spirit to make us better stewards of the earth, which is precious to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we say, forgive us the words we failed to speak and the words we should not have spoken. Forgive us the good we failed to do and the evil we have done. Forgive us the love we refused to offer and the grudges we have held on to. Create in us clean hearts, O Lord. Forgive our past failures, amend who we are, and direct whom you would have us become through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Now hear and believe anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, the new life has begun, and so Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Now I invite you to pause, to reflect on the journeys we have made and on the road which lies ahead as we journey from ashes to Easter.
May the love of God rest and transform every race and nation and eradicate all barriers that divide people into gender, caste, creed, and color. May the grace of his son, Jesus Christ, abide in the hearts of the faithful to forgive one another. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide us in extending every kindness and hospitality to strangers and to those with no home or no hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.